Hello everyone, this is Strawberry Shorty here with the Santa Clauses, Chapter 4, The Shoes Off the Bed Clause. So we continue to have super weird titles. And we kick things off with new Santa waking up and his daughter giving him what she calls jelly bean juice, which sounds super disgusting. I'm not really a jelly bean person, but I don't think jelly bean should be made into a juice. And... They're, they're rushing to, to get ready and all that. And it kind of makes me think of, like, what about the people they knew back home? Do they not miss them or care about them? What about, like, the company he was running? Uh, he talks about all the weight he's going to gain when he puts the coat on. So, apparently he is aware of that. Although, like, did he not put the coat on previously? Like, isn't that kind of like an official thing to put the coat on? Uh, the coat is also missing. They cannot find it anywhere. We go to, ooh, I guess, Starbucks. I don't think it's named. Where Scott is unintentionally being creepy because he is, like, knowing the name of kids and all that. And he starts giving another one of those super candy-ish uh, coffee orders or whatever. And it's like, if he keeps this up, he's going to look like Santa again in no time. We cut back to the North Pole, where Simon is giving a big speech to the elves, who are surprisingly woke, because they do not like being called tiny, apparently. Tiny people. And one of the elves, just random elf, suddenly gets attention. And it's again, I wonder if this is the one that, like, shouted, like, an episode ago. She, she asks new Santa for a hug. And it's just so out of nowhere and so weird. Because this, this elf really looks like a child. Like, they're they're all kind of... They're all obviously kids, mostly. But she really looks young. And it's kind of a relief when Santa calls. Like, that feels like a trap. <laughs> because it really does. And then she asks if he's going to tuck her in at night. Which, again, it's, like, really weird. <laughs> and it kind of it kind of makes me feel like all of these elves are crazy. And, and kind of concerning, and like, what relationship did they have with the Santas? Because they're not actually supposed to be kids. They're supposed to be, like, at least most of them are, like, hundreds of years old. And, uh, Betty, Betty is having a hard time with things. Apparently Betty has had no parents, because when she talks about all the things that she's had to go through, she mentions not having a mother or father. Unless that's just, like, an elf thing. We don't really know how elves come into existence. We don't see any baby elves, but then in the Santa Claus 2... Or I think maybe it was Santa Claus 3. Uh, Mrs. Claus was running a school for elves, so... Who knows? I feel like they're not, you know, super consistent with all this. And... Yeah, the... Simon is, is super busy, which just makes me feel bad for poor Grace, you know. And we cut back to the... The Calvin family, who are playing a game called Flip the Sheep, which I kind of find myself wondering if that is, you know, a real thing. And, yeah, like, it's, it's apparently, a, like, a real challenge for him not being busy all the time, which, again, I'm still kind of baffled that Santa is supposed to be that busy. Uh, so... Sandra still seems unhappy, and especially when they reveal that the kids are going to have to start school. Which, like, Buddy is going to be starting school, because again, I'm not sure how old these two are supposed to be. Like, I had figured out Sandra was supposed to be, like, teenage-ish, but I thought Buddy was supposed to be in his 20s. <laughs> because if, if Scott's been Santa for 29 years, like, wouldn't the Mrs. Claus have been really early on? Like, I don't know. It's 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 very confusing to me. I wish we would get a concrete age for Buddy. And yeah, so we end up getting the, they look at the instructions, which is just this huge instruction manual. Like even back in the day, instruction manuals were not that big. Oh, and uh, elves are like uh, going missing, so that's a concern. They they go to the school. Uh, Sandra brought animals. Buddy makes a friend, but he, uh... Do we know the elves go missing yet? Maybe we don't. 
uh, Buddy keeps mentioning elves. That's the thing where I got confused there. To to other students, which is a concern. I feel like they maybe should have like prepared the children better. Uh, Carol is apparently a legend even after all this time. Everyone's super happy to see her back at the school. And I'm wondering if we're gonna go like a like a route where Scott gets jealous because suddenly he's not getting any attention and his wife is. And he continues to lapse into Santa mannerisms, including, you know, doing the ho-ho-ho thing. Then tries to claim he has allergies and is allergic to some plant. I thought it would have been funny if after he left, the lady said the plant was fake, but that doesn't happen. So back at the North Pole, Simon has been inspired when he learns how good the delivery system is, and he's going to make Christmas year-round. And they really should have vetted this guy more instead of just, you know making him Santa. And they do some sort of weird flash thing that made me wonder if my video was messing up, where they're flickering between the number and, I don't know, something else. And yeah, I, I could not see what the heck was going on. So, we shift to a uh, family picnic thingy where uh, Buddy meets his uh, his his friend Riley that he met at the, the school and has not seen since, and she reveals she transferred, which I don't know if time is supposed to have passed, but in my eyes, they met yesterday. So her just transferring school out of nowhere is really confusing. They, they definitely haven't seen each other since then. Uh, a horse runs away, and Sandra, who has been making no effort to make friends, much like Scott himself, runs after the horse, manages to get on top of the horse and stop it. And I'm pretty sure it was a stunt double for that scene. I don't normally notice that stuff, but it really did not seem like that was her on the horse. Oh, and the horse talks. Well, Sandra finally makes friends and with with a horse club, saddle club, if you will. And Carol is offered a job at a new charter school. We cut back to the North Pole where Simon is asking the elves for their blood, which is creepy and weird, but then he reveals he's apparently joking. And it comes out that the elves love Christmas and hate every day that is not Christmas, which, in reality, is kind of concerning, because you think the elves would be more depressed if they hate every day that is not Christmas. It's like one day a year you guys like. Noel is concerned, comparing the situation to, like, being tickled every day. It's like, yeah, you like being tickled, but who likes it every day nonstop? Which... Apparently, Betty has tickled him every day for two weeks, and he was not bothered by that, which brings a whole lot of questions. Especially, like, when did Betty have two weeks of time to do that? But, yeah, whatever. And Betty doesn't feel like she can complain, because it's not her job. But I, I kind of feel like it is her job. Like, call him out. Uh, Simon finishes his speech... And the elf, that same elf from last time, the one that really looks like a kid, asks for a hug again. And this time, he, he calls everyone in for a hug. I'm still very concerned about this elf. She, she, she seems like... She, she concerns me deeply. Like, is anyone else weirded out by this elf? Uh, Betty looks at the orb. The orb is still freaking out. I think they needed to do the orb a little bit better. Like, it never really looks like it's freaking out much to me. Anyway... So back at the Calvin household, things aren't really working out. Even though they were supposed to be having more family time with the retirement, suddenly everyone has a life, except for Scott. Carol is doing her job, the kids are having their friends, and Scott just finds himself pretty much alone. We, we see more about Simon's delivery service, which does not have a Christmassy name. Feels like it needs a Christmassy name, it's just whatever it was called before, deliver anytime or something. And some some of those think they should trust this guy. I'm just like, why? Why would you trust him? He he has given us no reason to trust him. And they think it's more that they want him to find his own way, but yeah. Oh, and more more elves are missing. And it's it's concerning. And Betty Betty calls him out on it a little bit, where it's like, you know, that none of this is right. We shouldn't be doing things like this. And Simon kind of starts to get on my nerves where he's kind of disrespecting Betty. Where he's like, you know, like, is, it, is this your job? Or are you just here to advise or whatever? And Noel doesn't like that things are like this. So he challenges Simon to a duel with candy canes. Which it's like, wow. And, and Simon makes like a weird reference where he calls himself daddy. 
And again, that's really weird when you're surrounded by elves that look like children. And I'm confused by this whole duel concept, because it's like, you can do this, you can just duel Santa and kick him out. I guess. And Newell mentions, like, oh, you don't bring Grace to work anymore while he's trying to taunt him. And it's like, oh, where, where is Grace? We haven't seen her in, like, any of these scenes. Uh, we're robbed of an awesome sword fight when Betty interrupts, stops the fight, and tells Noel to go take a bubblegum bath, which does not sound like a bath anyone should be taking. Noel decides, you know, he's got he's to leave and take matters into his own hands. He wants to go get Scott back. And he understands that Betty has her hands tied with her job. So he leaves a letter for her on her desk and leaves. Simon finds the letter first, however, and he rips it up, which is horrible. And we see him in his office with Grace, who's like, I don't know what she's doing. But he's, he's mostly ignoring her. Uh, more things are going wrong, and Betty arrives to reveal that after getting Grace to leave and... Simon is too busy to go with her. So, a big surprise that they're going that way. It, it kind of makes you wonder, again, why they bothered to get a Santa with a kid. Did they, they really should have stressed that this would be very hard for her. Especially since she has no one now, like, not even her mother is here. It's, it's, it's very sad. So, she, she, Betty is talking about how more elves have disappeared. I'm wondering what happens when elves disappear. Like, where do they go? Because it's kind of a freaky thought. And Simon is blaming Betty. He's saying that it's Betty's fault because she's the one in charge. And Simon is just coming across more and more as a jerk as this passes. Like, like first, you, you kind of snip at her when she's just doing her job. Then you tear up Noel's note. Because, like, from Betty's perspective, her husband has just disappeared and she has no idea where he is. And, like, she doesn't think he'd leave without telling her, which, you know, that's right. And the fact that Simon ripped up that note without having any real reason to, it's just kind of horrible. So Noel returns, Noel goes back to the, the real world, the main world, and encounters Scott, but Scott does not want to become Santa. He agrees to let Noel stick around, though, and come along on his new job. He's a shock delivery guy. And Scott tries to convince Noel that he should go back because... He's the number one elf, and Simon's going to need his help. And I'm just like, how did Noel become the number one elf? Like, Betty makes more sense as the number one elf. And apparently he and Betty have been married for like 900 years, which, wow. Noel becomes concerned when he finds a murdered snowman with its head cut off. And a quick investigation confirms that this was not a suicide. Like, I don't know why you'd think a decapitation was a suicide. It reminds me of a horror game called The House, where one of the all the victims were supposedly... I suppose they took their own lives, but then one of them apparently was decapitated. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Well, that was a bit dark of a tangent to go on for this. But I don't think anyone's watching this that's like a kid or anything. They get into a snowball fight with some jerky kids who were responsible for uh, messing with the snowman. And Santa does a Santa thing again where he knows one of the bully kids is like was apparently into like Tinker Toys at one point. Which... Weren't Tinker Toys, like, way, way long ago? Like, way before this kid would have been alive? Flashback to the North Pole. And... Oh, yeah. Santa lost the fight, by the way. So... Flashback to the... Oh, no, we don't go to the North Pole yet. Santa loses the fight. And he comes back and tells Carol he has been fired from his job for getting in the fight. She wants him to get his wet shoes off the bed. Or his shoes off the bed. And I'm just like, why are you still wearing your shoes? You were out in the snow, your shoes, your shoes would be wet, so you should have left your shoes by the door. She, she does a title drop as well. Back at the North Pole, I'm feeling increasingly bad for Betty because she's super worried about Noel. Everything is going wrong, and Simon could care less. The crazy elf, whose name is apparently Edie, I, I was able to get this in the credits. Like, one of the elves finally says it this episode, but I couldn't clearly make it out. She, she finally starts speaking sense, where she calls out new Santa on, you know, how Christmas isn't supposed to be every day. It's supposed to be something you look forward to. And she's very right about this. Because, you know, Christmas is something I look forward to. Even now in this situation. And then she, she, she gets, like, Thanos snapped out of existence. Like, she's like, oh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. And then she's gone. And... Simon tries to pass this off as normal, which, you know, 
it obviously isn't. One of the other elves, I think it is Crouton. Apparently, I think Crouton was in the first episode, but because they don't name anybody, you wouldn't know that. He he basically also kind of, he's like, you know, that's not normal. And then he disappears too. I'm super rooting for Betty at this point because Betty basically tells him off. But then Betty gets fired for, for, for doing this, which is like, again, I'm really hating Simon here. Betty goes to see the witch who is revealed to have the coat. The coat apparently made itself go to the witch. And it's like, does Santa not have magic if he doesn't put the coat on at some point? But Betty tells the witch she needs to get in contact with him. And the witch thinks she's talking about Santa Claus, but apparently she's talking about a different him. Which makes me wonder if she's talking about Bernard, which would be cool. Um, we flash back to the family, the Calvin family, and apparently it's been months... Months have passed in this story, and they did not convey that very well. So Noel has been staying with the family for months. Betty hasn't seen him for months. A lot's been happening. Uh, Scott's brought a bunch of Christmas stuff. He's going to spend Christmas with his family for the first time in 29 years, which, wow. Because, like, at first that immediately seemed weird to me. Like, you couldn't manage to spend Christmas with your family. But then I'm like, oh, but he's Santa, so that makes sense. But then I'm like, wait, it actually doesn't make sense. Because Santa delivers the presents more on Christmas Eve and maybe, like, really early Christmas morning. So, he should have been able to spend Christmas with his family. Like, it, it just seems very strange to me. And then, all of a sudden, like, time seems to freeze. Put that in. Time seems to freeze, which is, you know, concerning. And someone's hand grabs Santa's shoulder, which I'm, I'm getting, uh, wondering if this is going to be Bernard. I've heard people say Bernard is going to only be in one episode, which would suck, because if they're ramping him up to be this important, it feels like he should be around more. Oh, and uh, I, I was watching the credits to see who, to see if they would say Edie's name, and uh, really weird credits. And of course the heat kicks on now. Well, we're about done. So what did you think of this episode? How, do you hate Simon as much as I do? Because like, we all kind of probably saw the neglecting Grace thing coming, but the way he treats Betty is so nasty. <laughs> like, he needs to get, like, smacked. Let's lead a revolt like we did against the toy Santa in the Santa Clauses, too. But let me know what you thought of the episode. Please leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!